Today we are talking about systematic negotiation before negotiating part one. In other words, what phases have to be planned before the negotiation. I am Jose Manuel Garcia Lomas and Alan Perkins. In the following video after this one, we will try the systematic negotiation during the negotiation part two. Systematic planning is a key element for successful negotiation. It helps negotiators reduce stress, avoid underestimating or overestimating the other part and uncovers potential areas of agreement. Some negotiators do not plan at all. Others plan the negotiation simply with them in mind but in an unstructured way. By doing this certain important points are uncovered but it is not possible to consider all the key points of the negotiation. A systematic planning is necessary to anticipate all negotiation events and problems. Just as a checklist is useful not to overlook anything in other contexts, systematic planning can perform the same function for a negotiation. Although it encompasses much more than a checklist since each phase requires careful analysis of a variety of possibilities. Systematic planning also reduces stress, increasing the negotiator's personal effectiveness and control over the situation. The time dedicated to each phase can vary greatly in each negotiation depending on factors such as one, the experience of the negotiator, two, the complexity of the negotiation, and three, the specificity of the negotiation. But going into the before negotiating, we will distinguish eight phases that require a careful systematic study. Phase one, the initial question is, what information do we need? This first phase of planning is to collect any necessary and available information regarding our objectives, the issues to negotiate, relevant market information, the vital interests of each part and each negotiator, the bottom line of the other part, any effect or influence from the economic, social, cultural and political environment. In this phase we will determine the information we should seek to know or to confirm during the course of the negotiation. For it, four questions. What information do I have? What information do I want? What information do I need? What information do I need to collect? Phase two, setting our goals. The concrete objectives of the negotiation must be determined and prioritized within the categories of essential objectives and desirable objectives with a balance between short-term objectives and long-term objectives. Essential objectives refer to vital interests, desirable objectives concern non-vital but important and attractive interests. The objectives of each category must be prioritized. Short-term and long-term are relative Short term usually refers to periods of one year or less. Long term is usual for periods longer than one year. 
each objective generates its own theme and has its own priority in relation to each of the other objectives. When exchanges between objectives are flexible, additional themes emerge. Phase 3 Setting themes. Once the objectives have been defined, the issues to be negotiated must be identified. The areas of conflict are analyzed in the specific points to be negotiated. The analysis can be done topic by topic or topics with subtopics or both. Identifying the rest issues helps to recognize when the other part uses the tactic of creating artificial issues for exchange. The agenda of topic is known as the negotiation mix. The combination of the negotiation mix provides a table of the issues to be negotiated. The topics can be classified into economic and non-economic groups. Each of these two groups is then classified, considering the short and long-term advantages of both. Before moving forward, the objective should be to re-examine in the context of the issues identified. Phase 4. Analyzing the market. Everything that is traded has a market. Different forms of practices in that market may exist. In addition to the market value, and its practices, the market customs and their norms must be analyzed in relation to the negotiation methodology. Market value and practices, example, professional athletes feel free to demand a renegotiation of their contracts for several years after a good season, while that is taboo for managers after a bad season. Customs and norms. A merchant from the Near East in his bazaar will be disappointed if a customer leaves after hearing the price without bargaining for a real price. Phase 5. Analyzing strengths and weaknesses. Effective planning can eliminate or diminish potential weaknesses. First, weaknesses must be recognized. Once recognized, answers must be prepared. A useful response can be based on creating facts that have three distinct possibilities. One, create a strength on our part. Two, it diminish or eliminate one of our weaknesses. Three, create a weaknesses in the other part. As a general rule, weaknesses will not be mentioned if the other part has not heard about them. There are two exceptions. First, respond in anticipation of the weaknesses if the other part is going to discover it in the negotiation process. In other words, anticipating to the objection. Second, we will respond to weaknesses if by law it is required to discover weakness. To determine strengths and weaknesses, three broad factors must be considered. A. The vital interest of the part. B. The pressures of the situations and the feeling in need of or obliged to and C. The other negotiator. A. Vital interest. One of the parts who realizes that something may be affecting some vital interest of the other part has identified a strength for himself. To discover the other part's vital interest, answer the following question as fully as possible. Why does the other part want this negotiation? The vital interests of each part reveal 
the needs of each part. Satisfying those needs is what negotiation is really about. Meeting the needs of the other part creates a strength for our position, making it attractive to the other part, while at the same time achieving our own goals. All this tends to be more effective than using threats. Examples of vital interests are 1. Obtain a result that is perceived as fair. 2. Get as much as you can. And 3. Avoid a loss. Agreements result when each part decides that it is in its own interest to reach an agreement rather than not reaching an agreement. B. Pressures from the situation and the feeling in need or obligation to negotiate affect the negotiations. Although these forces may overlap with vital interests, they arise from specific temporal forces or personal idiosyncrasies, rather than from general intrinsic needs, example, ego side, states of the egos. C. The other negotiator. The personal interests of the other negotiator, his personality and styles of negotiation must be taken into account. Aspects of the personality to consider are sincerity, the need for control, the tendency to seek or avoid conflict and to compete or cooperate, the need to project a certain personal image, a willingness to subordinate the client's interest to the personal interest of the negotiator and decision maker, a certain willingness to take risk and an ability to tolerate uncertainties. Phase 6. Estimating opportunities and problems and threats. In the swap analysis, S for strengths, W for weaknesses, O for opportunities, and P for problems or threats, it is known that in negotiations, as in companies, strengths and weaknesses are something proper and inherent to the negotiation or the company, while opportunities and problems are threats belongs to the environment outside of the negotiation or the company. Therefore, when estimating the opportunities and problems threats that exist in the negotiation environment, the negotiators must be very conscious of how those opportunities and threats that come from outside can affect the development and the results of the negotiation. But never miss to take them into account. Don't disregard them. Phase 7. Setting the bottom line of the other part and valuing the opening position of the other part. For the other part, bottom line, two questions. One, what is the worst deal you can expect realistically that the other part can accept? And two, what is the best deal you can reach if you go your way? Open position of the other part. Two questions too. One, is the other part willing to open up to or above the highest expectations in order to have possibilities for exchanges and to make concessions or compensate for underestimates? And two, and if the other part is expected to open above their highest expectations, how above can it be? Phase 8. Value win-win results. Negotiation often produces results of win-lose. What one part wins is necessarily lost by the other part. Win-win occurs when one part wins at no cost to the other part. There are two categories of win-win. 
One, winning for one part without a corresponding loss for the other part. And two, mutual gain. First, winning for one part without a corresponding loss for the other part. These situations occur when one part wins but the other part does not suffer a corresponding loss and wins because an agreement is rich. In other words, the concession costs the other part who makes it or absolutely nothing or so little that it is insignificant. However, the concession is significant to the part receiving it. Does both parts win? Win, win. This usually happens when the each part have different needs. And second, mutual gain. The negotiation is often compared to a cake that only has a number of pieces to be distributed. Negotiation for mutual gain alters the size of the cake. It consists of expanding the cake through a creative process thought in new terms, in new limits. When this happens, the parties share the benefits. They have achieved a win-win result with mutual gain. After determining the possibilities of a win-win result, reevaluate the phases of the systematic negotiation carried out so far from the before negotiation. In order to make the necessary adjustments to our plan. This video has dealt with systematic negotiation before negotiating part 1. In the following videos we will try the systematic negotiation during the negotiation part 2. If you are interested in our videos, I suggest that you give a like and subscribe to our channel for the videos that are to come.